found in the vicinity of Friedenburg. 24 hours. In that time, we must get better acquainted with the enemy beyond the river, his plans, his capabilities. How do we do this? With the help of specialists, military intelligence specialists. Who are they, these specialists? They are men trained to deal with prisoners of war, extracting from them information that could be of both tactical and strategic importance. They are specially trained men who handle civilians, refugees, line crossers. They conduct interviews that can result in valuable leads. They are interpreters of foreign languages, dialects. They are translators. They are interpreters of aerial photography. Still another specialist is the one who keeps check on the identification, disposition, strength, organization, tactics, personalities and unit histories of enemy forces. All orders for the employment of military intelligence specialists originate here at G2. In charge of the intelligence specialists is the military intelligence detachment commander who spends his time between the detachment CP and G2 section. He is also responsible for the administrative and logistical functions of the MI detachment. At this time, he is reviewing the collection worksheet to answer the essential elements of information. Information the commanding general needs to make a sound decision in his plan for tomorrow's attack. The detachment commander frequently works as assistant to G2, although he is not a permanent member of the G2 section. As soon as possible, G2 must have an estimate for the commanding general, an estimate based on the collection of information from all agencies, including the specialists. The time has come for individual instructions to the specialists. From areas outside the G2 section have come G2 Air, Chief Imagery Interpreter, Chief Interrogator, Prisoner of War, and from the G2 section itself, the Order of Battle Specialist, and the Counterintelligence Branch Chief who normally is chief of the security section. Vital to the production of combat intelligence is the G2 duty officer, who collates and makes available for immediate use and dissemination all the information supplied by the specialists. Missing among the specialists are the interpreter translator personnel. Specific orders are not necessary for them at this time. Now for the briefing and specific orders to the specialists. What will the combat intelligence picture be before we launch the attack? A week ago, during the normal course of the production of combat intelligence, a number of photographic missions were flown, covering the enemy's position beyond the river. Here we see G2 Air and his chief imagery interpreter examining a record of those missions. We are at the Fire Support Coordination Center. Using a master cover trace, G2 Air determines what areas need more up-to-date cover. One such area is in the vicinity of Friedenburg. This mission, R8198, was flown just five days ago. The photographic quality was considered good. The information it revealed, potentially an enemy strong point, unoccupied artillery emplacements. Today, only hours away from the attack, the photographs take on added significance. Are those artillery emplacements still unoccupied?
To answer this question, G2 Air lays on a new photo mission for the Aerial Surveillance Platoon through the Division Aviation Company. Due to recent aircraft losses from enemy AA fires, a drone is used for the photographic mission. Meanwhile, a civilian has been brought to the security section. This section is deliberately located away from the sensitive area of the Division CP, yet easily accessible to civilians who may have valuable information. Although the counterintelligence agent speaks the native tongue, the civilian's dialect is not clearly understood. An interpreter familiar with his dialect is needed. To secure one, the counterintelligence agent contacts the operations officer of the security section. Interpreters cannot be stationed everywhere along the front, but when the need is there, the MI detachment can provide one. The interview begins. Following is the civilian's story as told to the counterintelligence agent through the interpreter specialist. I am a farmer. Here is my farm, 15 kilometers from Friedenburg. Two weeks ago, my family was forced to move away. Only I remained. I did not know at the time why they made me stay or made my family go away. Soon I saw that my family was not the only one. It looked like all of Friedenburg was leaving. I thought there must be a reason for making so many go. I did not learn the reason until I was forced into a labor group. What I was digging, I did not know, but this much I found out. For many kilometers in and around Friedenburg, there were strict security regulations. They were getting ready for something. What, I do not know, but something big. A few days later, I overheard soldiers say, this is a good place for artillery. Then I noticed a number on the bumper of the soldier's truck, the number A1-1326. Finally, I managed to escape. I crossed the river to the side of the Americans. One other thing happened. Close to the river, I saw soldiers putting down mines on both sides of the road. The civilian story, as presented through the interpreter, gives us some potentially valuable information. And since much of this information is of tactical significance, the farmer is sent immediately to the interrogator prisoner of war specialist at division for a further interview. Equally important is to relay the results of the interview to G2. On receiving this information, the duty officer at the G2 section evaluates and disseminates it designating intelligence agencies who might be interested in the farmer's story for reference or leads. One of these agencies, or specialists, is order of battle. Know your enemy. This is the OB specialist's job. Right now, he uses the order of battle reference file 
To determine what unit uses the bumper code number, A1-13-26, the number seen on the truck by the farmer. Yes, here it is. A1-13-26 falls within the 0 to 50 series, indicating the 10th Artillery Battalion, a self-propelled 300 millimeter gun battalion with a nuclear delivery capability, a supporting artillery unit from higher headquarters, an extremely vital piece of information. No time is lost to give this immediately to the duty officer with whom he is always in close contact. The duty officer loses no time to report the information to G2. Meanwhile, OB specialist records the intelligence in his worksheet. The information is also recorded on the order of battle sitmap. It is placed in the unlocated unit box, unlocated since the location of the artillery unit is not known and considered doubtful coming from a civilian source. At this time, S2 1st Battle Group has reported two enemy artillerymen captured. Their unit, 10th Artillery Battalion, the same unit recorded on the sitmap. Doubt no longer exists, but the information itself must remain in the unlocated unit box. To locate the artillery unit is of the utmost importance, and primarily for that reason, the two POWs are evacuated from battle group to division for a more thorough interrogation. Will the IPW specialists at division be able to obtain this information from these men. I have only to give you name, rank, serial number, and date of birth. Do you know what this is? Of course. It is my ID book. And your pay book. Only who will pay you now? But if we'll pay you if you cooperate, Corporal. I give you only my name, rank... Serial number and date of birth. Yes, I know all about that. Quoting a POW's rights according to the Geneva Convention, it is the usual practice. Do you know what amazes me? Your government. You've been trained to recite like a little schoolboy. Name, rank, serial number, date of birth. Yet here, right here in your ID book, I see you belong to the 10th Artillery Battalion. Now we know that this is an artillery unit with a nuclear delivery capability. Oh, it's in code. But we decoded it. Long before you were picked up. Sit down, Corporal. Now. Here's some more. Assigned to the artillery school at Lindheim a year ago last November. And then a missile unit, 5th Artillery. It's all here in your ID book in black and white. Doesn't make sense, does it? My knowing more than you're willing to give. At least, not to an intelligent soldier. One so important that he's entrusted with nuclear matters. By probing, unmasking personal weaknesses, playing upon ego, the IPW specialist this time succeeds in breaking down the POW's resistance to interrogation. The information received coincides with that obtained from the POW lieutenant who has been interrogated simultaneously in another room. We learn from this interrogation 
that the 10th Artillery Battalion with nuclear delivery capability is located in the vicinity of Friedenburg. Almost at the same time, the developed film from the drone photographic mission is examined by the imagery interpreter specialist in a mobile photo lab. This lab is located in the vicinity of the drone recovery area to expedite the work of the specialist in making the interpretation available as quickly as possible to G2. And here is the result. What were unoccupied gun emplacements a week ago are now pinpointed as well dug in occupied gun emplacements. At the G2 section, this information is plotted on the G2 sitmap. It is now fairly accurate to say that the farmer had been forced into a labor group to dig emplacements for the 10th Artillery Battalion. And the fact that this unit has nuclear delivery capability bears out the farmer's statement on strict security in the area of Friedenburg. As time presses onward, the work of the intelligence specialists continues, this time at a checkpoint close to the river. MPs have been advised by the security section that a team of saboteurs have crossed the river by rubber boat. A specially constructed pencil carries their identification. Minutes later, counterintelligence agents arrive to interrogate the suspected saboteur. Separated from the rest of his team, this man claims that he is a demolition expert but that he has no knowledge of the target to be sabotaged. One thing he does reveal is the presence of a large number of trucks on the enemy's side of the river. Troop carrying trucks. This is important information. So the saboteur is evacuated to division for further interrogation. A more intensive interrogation by the IPW specialist reveals that the trucks were meant for troop evacuation. What troops? The IPW specialist probes deeper and deeper. Finally, we learn that the enemy's entire left flank is to be withdrawn. Through the order of battle specialist, we know that the 14th Rifle Regiment occupied this area. A note of verification is added to the saboteur's story. G2 Air informed us that a visual aerial surveillance of the river line showed troop movements. Order of battle, as well as the other intelligence specialists, makes no interpretation. But OB does indicate the significance of the possible evacuation of the 14th Rifle Regiment. According to OB, if the 14th is moving back, it could be because the enemy is clearing the area of their own troops in preparation for a nuclear attack from the vicinity of Friedenburg. It is midnight. In the past 19 hours, every intelligence specialist has contributed information to the intelligence picture. Everyone, except the translator. At this moment, he is at the counterintelligence branch of the G2 section, translating a document brought to the attention of G5, Civil Affairs. This document, was picked up by a native friendly to our cause. It told of a cache of dynamite and ammunition intended for a sabotage mission.
target of this mission, our Division Communications Center. This, then, is the story of the specialists in military intelligence. Not the whole story, for the whole story is never finished. But enough intelligence is produced for G2 to prepare an intelligence estimate and to answer the vital essential elements of information. Yes, the intelligence estimate is ready for the commanding general. And the intelligence specialists have made a valuable contribution to this estimate. Our mission was to cross the river to secure a bridgehead, and we made it. We made it through the combined efforts of fighting men, armed not only with weapons, but with timely information about the enemy.